Today, I'm giving you my best tips for traveling with photography gear. So in this video, I want to talk about some of the things and tips that I've picked up along the way with traveling with photography equipment. A lot of the times we're restricted in what we can carry and how we can carry it, uh, particularly when we're flying and we're forced to take um, a lot of equipment up into the cabin with us. So you have to take it as cabin luggage. You can't check in a lot of this stuff and some of the stuff you don't want to check in, quite, uh, quite honestly. Um, so you have to make some compromises in what you what you carry and how you carry it. So uh, so you have to be really, really efficient in how you do it. So I've got a couple of things that I want to share with you and hopefully you find these useful. Okay, so the first one is around power. And what I used to do in the past is have these smart adapters that uh, it's just basically one solution in a box where depending on which country you're in, you either push a button or you slide a slider and um, and with the corresponding prongs for that country would pop out. The problem with those ones, the ones that I've had anyway, is that they've had a fuse inside them rather than a circuit breaker. So that if you overload it by plugging in too many things, um, you typically, it, it's, it's gone. You have to replace the fuse, which means you have to go to an electronic shop, which is uh, most of the time uh, not, not, um, not possible. So what I've done is I've gone for these simple little adapters. These, there's no smart in these at all. It's just an adapter. It just changes the prongs basically. And then what I do is I plug that into the back of a power board. In this case, a power cube, because it's more efficient. Again, you can pack these um, a lot easier than you can a power strip. Um, this one here is, uh, and I'll put links for all this stuff in the in, below in the description if you're interested. But this one gives me four outlets, and it also gives me a couple of USB ports in there, so I don't have to um, I don't have to take up any of the uh, any of the, uh, the the power points in here with USB adapters. I can just use these ones. So that is my uh, solution for uh, for power management. And also with these ones here, this one has a little pop um, a little popping uh, fuse in there as well. So if I do overload it. Uh, I'm not, uh, all it's going to do is just going to pop that fuse so I can just unplug whatever's causing it to pop and then just push that back in there with uh, uh, with a pen or something and, uh, and you're up and running again. So that is a really good way uh, to handle your, your power management. Okay, so next I want to talk about uh, battery charging and I have made a video about this charger because it's such an awesome charger that it, I have made a, a separate video. I'll link somewhere in here to that one video if you want to check it out. But in summary, what makes this such an amazing charger is that it's got four bays and they all charge simultaneously. So it's not sequential like some of them. Uh, in some cases, you'll have um, charges like this where they'll charge the first one and only after the first one is charged, does it move on to the next one. And so it can take all night to charge all four batteries, but this one does it all four at the same time. And it's got a little LCD display for each one of these bays as well. So you know exactly what the status of that battery is. Um, but the best thing about this is that these little plates here pop out and you can actually replace these with the different adapters. So in my case, uh, that's a 5D Mark IV adapter. So if I was just, just taking a whole bunch of 5D Mark IVs to my shoe, I would replace all these four plates with the corresponding Canon ones. Um, as I have it, I've got uh, two Sony NPF um, uh, plates in there and two Canon 5D Mark IV uh, adapters in there so that I only need to take this one charger and I can charge all, all the batteries that I need on site uh, using the one device. The other cool thing also is that this just has a regular, I'm not sure if you can see that, hopefully it'll it'll focus in there, but it's just a regular power cord in there. The power supply unit is built into the actual unit itself, so there's no brick, it's just a power cord and you plug it into the wall and uh, and off you go. And it's got a USB port in there as well and a little fan as well to keep everything, everything cool. So that is the best charger ever and my battery charging solution. Okay, the next one, we're talking about the washer in the strap. And I've talked about this before, um, but basically all my cameras are on all the straps. I've got a couple of washers in there as well. And quite simply, that is to undo the plate on the bottom of the camera, the tripod plate, because most often I am not carrying a screwdriver and I don't carry coins. So I'm always struggling to find something to undo this thing with. So having a washer in there makes it really, really practical. And it means that you can carry the camera 
oh, you can carry it on a plane and no one's going to give you any grief about a couple of washers, but they're going to have an issue if you carry a screwdriver with you. So that is that tip there. Okay, the next tip is around rubber bands. And I carry rubber bands all over the place. Um, I just carry rubber bands everywhere because I think they're really useful. But particularly, it forms part of my battery management system. So this is my pouch where I carry all my batteries. And uh, in the middle of a shoot, if I need a fresh battery, all I do is I reach in here and any battery that has one of those little rubber bands, little loom bands, I know that that is charged and ready to go. So, uh, and so all my batteries in here, have a little battery, a little uh, little rubber band. This one here does not. This needs charging so that I know not to grab this one. So this works really, really well. And also while we are on batteries, if you do uh, carry batteries with you on a plane, which you have to carry on your carry-on, you're not allowed to check these into your into your luggage. Um, you should put a little bit of gaffer tape over the top of the terminals. If you do get stopped by security. Um, I have been stopped one time. They've seen that I've covered the tapes in there and the guys realized that I'm serious about security. And uh, he said, well done on these and basically just let me go. The reason you do that is so that the batteries don't short uh, if they touch uh, the same piece of metal at the same time, which could start a fire. So um, you do that. It shows the, the security people that you're serious about security and they'll just let you, they'll just let you go. Okay, my next tip is around a camera strap. Now, um, a lot of the times you hear people telling you that you should put a little bit of gaff tape over the top of, the, of the, the model or the brand of the camera to make it look cheap, but then they forget that most camera manufacturers tend to put the model of the camera on the strap. I think most, most of them do this. So you've got a camera that you sort of made to look like it's not, um, not a target, but uh, that stands out a lot more than the little, the little label on the bottom of the camera. So one of the things that I do is I've got a few uh, old camera straps, some that are beat up and some that I've roughed up myself, and I swap it over before I go anywhere where I'm not familiar or I think uh, it could be a little bit weird, like as far as security. Uh, if I'm not sure, I just change the camera straps and then I also go and put gaff tape or I use a little Sharpie and just paint over the top of the, uh, top of the brands and the models and the camera then genuinely looks like it's really, really old and hopefully doesn't make you so much of a target. Okay, so the last tip is on my business card. I've got one of my business cards on the back of it. I've got, if lost, please call. And then this is on the outside of my bag on a little clear pouch. Uh, so if somebody, if I do lose my bag and somebody finds it, hopefully they're cool and they're gonna contact me with the phone number or email address that's on the back of the card. The other thing that I do is every time I format the cards on my camera, just as a habit, I always take one picture and then review the picture just to make sure that everything's working correctly, that, that it's right into the cards and that the autofocus is working. And I always take a picture of the same thing, which is this card. So the first photo on this, on, on any of my cameras is going to be a picture of this, which includes my email address and phone number. So if somebody does find just the camera, uh, potentially, uh, you know, it, it most likely someone's going to look through the photos and on a, on a Canon camera when you turn it on the first photo that comes up is the first photo it's sequential so it's the first one that you took so that's going to be the first thing that they see so hopefully they can just zoom in there have a look at my details and maybe give me uh, give me a call to let me know that they've got my camera uh, worst case scenario, I guess, uh, is that if someone decides that they want to keep the camera, but then they throw away the cards and somebody finds the cards, maybe they'll look at the, the files on the cards and find that there is one photo in there that's got my details. So maybe I might get my cards back with my images. So uh, I guess it's on, a, on, on different levels. Hopefully uh, you get some of that stuff back. But anyway, that, they are my tips for uh, traveling with camera gear um, or any expensive gear, really. If you found this useful, please give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That way you're not going to miss out on any videos that I make in the future. I want to thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.